on another podcast, I heard you give a really interesting breakdown for why focusing on longevity versus specific issues like cancer can have yeah. a much greater total impact. And there's a quick quote I want to read. This quote is from Sam Altman, who was a partner at Y Combinator and the founder now of OpenAI, CEO of OpenAI. He says, the best people in both groups spend a lot of time reflecting on some version of the Hamming question. What are the most important problems in your field and why aren't you working on them? In general, no one reflects on this question enough, but the best people do it the most and have the best problem taste, which is some combination of learning to think independently, reason about the future and identify attack vectors. And when I heard you give that breakdown on this other podcast, it struck me as a very good argument for longevity as an attack vector to overall impact on, on health. So We'd love to hear that breakdown on, on longevity versus focusing on something more specific like cancer or heart disease. Sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to tweak this just a little bit because I don't know that longevity is the right word. It's sort of a popular way of framing this area of research now, but, um, it's possible to live a long time and not be in good health. Right. And it's possible to, to live a long time by, well, by definition, avoiding dying, right? But but I think probably what what the way I would frame it is targeting aging biology or the biology of aging is um, really the 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 core tenet of I think maximizing health span and also maximizing longevity. And and I think one of the ways to appreciate this is if you think about the leading causes of death and disability. Uh, pretty much every developed nation in the world, all of them share age as their greatest greatest risk factor. Um, and it's not even close. So, you know, if you think about things like cancer or heart disease, most of the risk factors that people talk about are going to be things like obesity, high blood pressure. Um, those all increase your risk of developing those diseases by about two to threefold. If you look at the increased risk of developing those diseases, just going from 35 to 75, depending a little bit on the disease, it's anywhere from 50 fold to 500 fold. So we're talking an order of magnitude difference, at least in the, the relative risk associated with getting old compared to the relative risk of you know, the, the kinds of lifestyle changes that we might be, be more familiar with. Um, uh, so I think you have to appreciate that in order to, to understand why targeting the biology that, that changes between being young and being old can have a outsized impact on relative risk for each of these individual diseases. And if you look at the way that we have approached health, uh, and biomedical research and clinical practice over the last century, it's really been focused around individual diseases. So we focus on diagnosing what's wrong with you, whether it's cancer or diabetes or heart disease, and then trying to treat that disease. You know, we try to cure it. More often, what we, what we actually end up doing is treating the symptoms. What I think we really need is a fundamental shift in the way that we approach human health towards keeping people healthy instead of waiting until they're sick. And the very best way to do that is by targeting the biology of aging, because that is the single greatest risk factor for getting sick in the first place. The other thing I would just add to that is it's not only about disease, right? So again, our culture of, of healthcare is very much focused around disease. It's really disease care, I would say. Um, but it's not only diseases. You can still have a substantial loss in quality of life without being diagnosed with cancer or heart disease or diabetes or kidney disease or, or whatever. We have all these functional declines that go along with aging that maybe aren't diagnosed as diseases, but that still have a really significant impact on, on the quality of life and our ability to do what we want to do. And again, it's the biology of aging that's really driving those functional declines, driving the risk of disease. So if we can understand that biology, that gives us an opportunity to intervene in that biology in a way that will preserve health, maintain health much later into life. And that's where, you know, we talk a lot about longevity, but really I think for me, it's equally maybe more about maximizing health span and really maintaining quality of life and high function for as long as possible. And again, the very best way to do that is by targeting the biology of aging.
If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple, Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 